some of my best foraging time is when I'm out walking with my dudes. A lot of times I, when I go out, I don't know what I'll find. And this time we went out looking for salmon berries, but somebody had gotten there first. Damn it. Luckily, hi doggy. We came upon a huge field of gorgeous red clover. Red clover is a really amazing plant. You may have probably noticed it before, or maybe you even eaten it. It's been used across cultures for thousands of years, and a really w easy way to identify it is by its three oval leaves with a white marking on them. St. Patrick used the clover to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity to those Irish savages. Three leaves, one stem, and now it's Ireland's most known national symbol with a red flower or sometimes a pink flower. It came from Europe and now it grows wild across North America in cool places and as a rule wherever corn grows well. The whole plant is edible but as a warning, uncooked parts have been known to cause bloating in man and beast. Clover has been used as a medicinal plant for a whole host of ailments for a long, long time especially successful in treating lady bits and menopause. Don't worry if you're a guy though, you can still eat it. I don't use it medicinally so much, but when I drink it as a tea, I find it has a mild sedative effect. Though you can eat the whole plant, for this recipe we only need the flowers. Don't pick the brown flowers, we only want the young sexy ones. As always, we should start by thoroughly washing our, our clovers. After they're completely washed, take off the stems and the leaves. You don't need them for this recipe and you can use them later in a soup or something. So you can wrap them up and put them in the freezer. Uh, make sure to label them by the way. And you can use them later. Next we have the rind of a quarter of a lemon, grated or chopped very finely, and the juice of one whole lemon. So for this you just need one lemon, juice it up. And next up we have Sean's favorite, chickpea flour. It's actually also called chana flour or gram flour, and it's a very fine flour. Um, you can find it in the Indian aisle of grocery stores, and we need one level cup into a bowl. Next, one egg, and you can use the same cup if you don't have a dishwasher. Otherwise, use a different one and just beat it up until it looks like a beaten egg and then add it into the bowl with the chickpea flour. And you don't have to stir it in that well. We'll, we'll get to that. Next up, we have one cup of lukewarm water. Lukewarm is kind of important here. Not hot, not cold. Again, same cup, no dishwasher, sorry and pour it in. And it's important to mix well. What you're looking for is a really runny batter with no flour clumps in there. So take your time and mix it in as best as you can. And luckily Sean is taking care of this step because I am way too impatient and we would be eating pretty gross clumpy pancakes. So thank you Sean. Still going. Uh, uh, stir it more. You gotta keep going. Okay, time to add in the vanilla and the honey. So we're looking for a half teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of honey. Dump her in there. Oh yeah, and the lemon juice. Dump that in now too. And stir that in until it looks until you can't see it anymore. And now it's time to separate the flower petals from the flower heads. Chopping it or doing it by hand is okay, crumbling it, but what we're looking for is the consistency of sprinkles. Small clumps are okay, but discard any flowers that look questionable, like wilted or brown, and that looks nice. And two tablespoons of oil, any oil that you like, into a skillet and heat it to medium. I think we used peanut oil. And now add in the flower petals and the lemon rind and uh, stir that up. It kind of looks like a runny cake batter with sprinkles in it. And get every last single bit of it from the bowl and pour it into a measuring cup. 
can use a ladle too, but we like to use a measuring cup for easy pourability. Pour about a quarter cup of the thyme into the skillet and spread it around so it's a thin layer and let it cook about four to five minutes on one side until it's ready to flip. You can tell that it's ready to flip when the edges start to curl away from the pan. Noodle around the kitchen a little bit while you wait for it to cook. You may be tempted to try the batter at this stage, but trust me, don't. Chickpea flour is really great and a versatile ingredient, but it tastes not great by itself. Once we tried to make cookie dough and eat the batter and it was so bad, but really good when cooked, I promise. Anyway, flip it, cook it for one or two more minutes on the other side, and serve it with some honey yogurt and a fresh apricot. It is so good, I promise. And so with the rest of the flowers, I dry them in the oven for 20 minutes and when they come out, I crumble them and make a tea. And I put about two, a, a tablespoon of the tea into a little tea guy in my best cup. And I drink this before bedtime because it is a mild sedative, so this is not morning tea. But it tastes really nice. And so I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Fantastic Forager and I hope we'll see you next time for our next plant. In the meantime, happy foraging!